Welcome back to yet another week of the Point to Play podcast, a video podcast again today, guys. Jeff, Anthony, what is up, everybody? Hey yo, Josh using, Bell just hit a dinger. You're using the old, you're using the old intro music. It's not. Uh, yeah, I, I, I want to mix it up a tad. You know. Nah, I know, I know. I'm sorry, um, I was like, yeah, oh, okay, was... no more black IPs anymore. <laughs> well, we're kind of <laughs> a week that, into it. That song's my um, jam. But just so you know, five years old AC. Let's get it started. <laughs> I was bumping to that let's back get in it. the day. Five years old. Yeah, yo. When Does that, that hold you when like, it came out? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's when Elephant came out in like oh four oh three. So that's all that yeah, that's all. Right. Yeah, see, I knew good music back in the day. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, yeah, it was a yeah. great first series of baseball, and we got a lot to talk about. Yeah, we indeed do. Um, Jeff's got a lot to say. Anthony's got a lot to say. But Jeff has a lot of bragging so far uh, in the first week, and we'll get into that in a little bit with regards to fantasy, um, fantasy baseball which Jeff is off to a very hot start. Um, but yes, uh, first of all, guys, favorite series of the week. Uh, you know, Tuesday night, we're dropping this. What's your favorite series from opening week, 2022? Cubs Brewers. All right. Anthony. I have to, I have to go with... Um, to them. I got to go Blue Jays, Rangers, offensive firepower. And, 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 and the Rangers showed that, you know... They could swing it. You know, we saw it Sunday, you know. They ran it up on the Blue Jays. So, you know, those signings so far, they're looking pretty good right now. That is true. I mean, Corey Seager looked good. I mean, the Rangers do impress. The pitching's not so hot. Uh, They did really well the last uh, game after giving up six runs, getting down 6-1. Pitching did really well for Texas that day on, uh, what was it, Sunday? Yeah. Um, so yeah, great performance there. Yeah, it's a good pick, Anthony. It's a bold one though, but I like it. Uh, Jeff, can I guess why you Cubs Brewers? Do you say that because we were driving into New York on Saturday for the Yankees Red Sox game, and we were following Brandon Woodruff's terrible uh, opening outing of the of the season, where he walked three batters in the first inning, never did that before, and then all of a sudden, uh, <laughs> all of a sudden the Cubs have this nine nothing lead. Is that why it's your favorite series? Well, I, I mean, I mean, first of all, Dom, Dom has two dominant, normally dominant pitchers from the Brewers, and they did terrible. So that's that's helping me a lot. Um, <laughs> but no, no, it it's because you know the the Cubs are not a team that should be good this year, but based off winning that series, they. They might be something, even if they don't make the playoffs. It'll give it'll give the city of Chicago a reason to root for them at least. So I'm I'm excited to see how they shape up this year. No it's doubt, a sign of things to come for them. Yeah, uh, totally. Um, yeah, I, I like it for sure. Uh, Chicago's going to be a very good team, without a doubt, in my mind. I think they will. Um, you know, they got guys there. They got guys there that are surprising me already. You know, you can't name yeah. most of them, but they're, they're, they have a good start. Um, I mean, let, 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 let's just look at Suzuki, for example. You know, guy comes over, you know, first series, and he, he's already contributing. He's already doing pretty well for the team. He's adjusting quite nicely so far. So that that alone is amazing for Cubs fans to see and for the organization. Yeah, you yeah. have to, uh, you have to know true. that um... – you know, with these international players, though, there's always that fear factor of like, yes, like Suzuki was putting up great numbers. The same with Kikuchi, um, they put up great numbers in the in their leagues in in Japan and China. But it's like, does it transfer over to the big leagues? And they shelled out a lot of money for him. And you know, he had a two home run game today on Tuesday. You know, and so far he's like so far igniting that offense. So. You know, it, it, it it's good to see it for Chicago, and it's not just going to be just White Sox dominant. In that city, you know, the Cubs still got, you know, they're like, hello, we're still here. You know, we're still relevant. You know, don't count us out yet. Right. Yeah, they, they look decent. Like, it's just a good start for the Cubs. Um, I would have to say, if I had to – see, I've been thinking, as you guys were talking, I was thinking about it a little bit. Yankees-Red Sox was – and I know I think Anthony was the one that said the obvious one. Um, but, yeah, I think the Yankees-Red Sox showed a lot of good, good quality baseball. 
Um, a lot of great games, especially opening day. Anthony had a great time opening day. I took Jeff the very next day. Uh, Jeff had a blast too for that uh, Saturday game. Uh, Jeff, we heard that there was more energy in the stadium that Saturday game. Um, even though Fridays ended in a walk off, um, I think that's such you know, a that lie. Saturday game was just. You think so? <laughs> that's uh, there's no I mean, way I was that there both Saturday's times. game was was was. I don't. I still don't buy. It. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I just have to be. But I'm just like Friday's game was just like, like so exhilarating, and just the fact that it was over. I mean, I was there. Knew. Yeah, I, I. It's hard because. Well, I mean, I was there for both games. Um, I mean, Friday was pretty electrifying when the Donaldson thing happened. When the Donaldson walk off hit came up the middle. Uh, but Saturday, man, like a lot of people came. It's a weekend. Um, you know, so I think that's what factors into it as well. Um, but not so sure. But um, but yeah, both either way, Yankee fans showed up uh, Friday and Saturday, and uh, even a little bit of Sunday, which Sunday could have turned out better, I think, for for the Yankees for sure. Um, but how about them, guys? So let's get right into that, uh, shall we? With when it comes to the Yankees, um, let's get right to the team. Um, what are your initial thoughts after that series with the Red Sox? Um, is it offense, pitching? I know pitching has been pretty solid for the Yankees so far, for the most part, and the bullpen specifically. What do you guys hate? What do you guys like? Um, I Two have thoughts. to. I have to say, mine would have to be the hitting philosophy has not changed. Um, so far, it is a home run or die club right now, and I'm not liking that. Even though we won the first two games of that series. All the hits mainly came from home runs. Same with on Saturday, home runs. I'm just like, that's not what we want to see. And then come Sunday night, they stream together some hits, get some guys in scoring position. What do they do? Nothing. Why? They didn't hit home runs. Pitching solid. Pitching is great. Caracol, shaky. He was like, he got pissed because of the opening day stuff. You know, get it, get, get a grip, Cole. You knew this was going to happen. But look, uh, Tyone pitched great. Montgomery pitched great. Severino pitched okay. So, but the bullpen's been phenomenal, you know. So the pitching's not the problem; it's the offense. You know, Joey Gallo's got to be more consistent. Aaron Hicks has got to, you know, string some better hits together. And it's just we need more of like just just singles and doubles and just manufacturing runs a little bit more. We're not seeing that right now, and that's concerning for me. And I'm just, and I don't want the bullpen to get gassed. I also don't want the bullpen to get gassed. Okay. Those, those are my two takeaways. Home run, home run or die. And I'm afraid the bullpen's going to get gassed too soon. Um, yeah, I mean, we saw a little bit out tonight too with Nestor Cortez getting taken out very, uh, relatively early. I think four and two thirds was it, four and a third um, against Toronto. And then the bullpen comes in to do the work, which to be fair, the bullpen has a uh, south of a two, uh, two ERA so far in the season. Um, so good job on them. But Jeff, I'll go to you f- just for your uh, initial thoughts on this team. Yeah. So first, I have not been impressed with our starting pitching um, much at all. You know, um, Cole, like like Anthony said, he he said that it got in his head that the game started, what, like a whole four, six minutes later than it should have. Like, I saw the tweet pop up, and I thought it was, like, a joke or something at first, like one of those joke Twitter accounts. It, uh-uh. it It's just ridiculous that it happened in the first place, and he's using that as an excuse as to why he did bad. You know, that this is the MLB, you know. If, if your mind's not in it, Paul, then get out of New York. It's all I'm going to say. And you um, knew it was happening. Severino. Yeah, exactly. Um, Severino, for his first start of the season and considering all the injuries he's had to overcome, I think he did okay. Um, you know, uh, Montgomery, you know, I, I wonder how much of his problem was because he took that shot to the knee um, early in the game. I don't know how much that factored in, but I mean, Hats off to him for staying in the game after that, because that that was a tough shot watching it. I thought he was down and out for a good while, but I guess yeah. not. But I thought the same the, thing. Yeah, but the big thing, and going back to Anthony's point about, you know, living by the long ball, 
the Yankees, as of right now, we're still in the top of the eighth here. So the score can change still, but we've scored 16 runs total in five games, one of those being a shutout. Only six of our runs have not been scored off of home runs. Two of those were off of extra innings, so Manfred's man stuff, and one of those was off an error today. So we've only had three legitimate runs scored that have not been off home runs or errors or Manfred's man. So that, I don't like that a lot. That's very concerning to me. You know, you looked at Boston this series and yeah, they, they hit the home runs as well, but they were able to plate guys across, you know, with singles and doubles and just hitting the ball generally well. And that's a team, in my opinion, that's going to have a lot more longevity and be able to really grind back from those tough ball games as the season goes on, especially once we get to September and October baseball. Just based off of that, I would say Boston's offense is better than us. Yeah. Um, okay. Fair enough there. Um, yeah, I, I'd have to say, you know, uh, piggybacking off of Jeff a bit. Yeah, I noticed that on Friday. I mean, the the thing for me is the slow starts. Um, and that's why I made an emphasis on saying the bullpen is good. The bullpen has south of a two ERA. The starting pitching doesn't. The bullpen does. Tyone was actually the first pitcher on the Yankees on Sunday to go five to go at least five innings um, on the season for any Yankee starting pitcher. Um, so starting pitching out of the gate has been a little bit of an issue um, for me, especially with Cole on opening day. We all saw that. Um, and then I we, think I say again? I do think that some of it does. Um, come down to you know it was a shorter spring training. They ain't yeah. have as mu- they ain't have as much time to practice and get thrown in those game situations. So and it it's around the league. You know there are these ridiculously high scores and it's all coming off of you know like Brandon Woodruff. You know typically a phenomenal pitcher but just got absolutely destroyed. Right, and so that's a good point. I, yeah, I do I do think some of it is because of a shortened spring training and short in preseason workouts. So I think, you know, I think after this week, it'll start leveling out, but, you know, who knows? Yeah, I, I'd have to agree with that. You know, the, the just the pitching itself, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give that a pass um, for now, but they really have to fix, they really have to, you know, fix the kinks um, here with when it comes to starting pitching because the bullpen looks solid. You know, there's really, I really have no complaints. I mean, Every guy that's come out so far, I mean, Marinacci, I think his name is, uh, Ron Marinacci, I'm just still getting used to him, um, from my neck of the woods in Tom's River, um, stood out in spring training. He's playing in New York now. He looked pretty solid on Friday and Sunday um, when I saw him. So, yeah, I mean, really impressive stuff, and uh, I like the bullpen a lot uh, at, at this current time. But, like, I think it was Anthony who said the bullpen is, or is it Jeff, I forget, the bullpen will be used a lot. Um, with, with, you know, guys going four innings. Yeah, Anthony. Um, so, you know, four, you know, four innings for a starting pitcher and then, you know, relying for what, five innings, uh, four and a half on a, a, a relievers. I mean, that's a lot to take in. Um, so yeah, I, I really, I really have concerns on that part, but again, my concerns are very, um, little because it's so early on and, you know, a lot can change, obviously. Do you guys, um, but guys. Uh, say again. Do you guys like how? Go ahead. Like I've noticed this a lot, not only with the Yankees or it's just this new baseball philosophy. I think we're kind of in right now. Do you guys like how starting pitchers aren't going as deep as they once were? Meaning, like at least in my eyes, I'm looking at them as like long relievers and not starters. They're not going six, seven innings. They're going four to five, maybe three. I consider them at this point, they're long relievers at this point or openers. So it's like, it's the starting pitcher right. kind of being phased out because who really goes deep now? Garrett Cole didn't go deep. We'll see if he goes deep to, uh, on Wednesday, but Verlander, he'll go deep. Scherzer will go deep. You would think the ground, but, you know, he throws one bad pitch and his shoulder gets messed up. So it's like, you know, and, you know, we see Severino, Cortez, they're not even hitting five innings. You know, so what do you guys think? Do you, do you think we're, we're we're past starting pitching? I think it's now just the long reliever opener kind of game, or do you think we'll ever get back to that? I don't think we ever will. 
I, you know, I wonder like the, because today, you know, teams are really focused on, on saving the arms because it's a 162 game season. I think when it comes to the new, you know, we've evolved as athletes. We, uh, you know, the players have at least, and over the years for decades, and it's really shown, you know, velocity has increased. Uh, speeds have increased. A lot of, a lot more relievers and starters are throwing 100 miles an hour now, north of 100 miles an hour uh, on their pitches. Um, so you got that going too. So the game has really evolved. And with that means you're running more risk for injury. Uh, so with that, with that in mind, you know, I think, I think that's what plays in part to why why the starters are sitting for so, you know, or are not playing as long because these pitchers have just evolved so much to where I'll compare it to like a tennis player, right? Uh, like Rafael Nadal, who a lot of, who, even if you're not a tennis fan, you'll know who he is. He plays such a aggressive style and such a, such a style of tennis that's different. And it's so risky when it comes to um, his spin and everything. It's so risky to where, he runs the risk of getting hurt all the time, like multiple times a year, and he still wins championships. Um, the same can be said now for major league pitchers, um, who I think are really evolving to that role. Um, but to sum it up, you know, I think, I think, you know, the 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 evolving in the athletes um, is is really the reason for that. And now you don't want to run that risk in a 162 game season. Jeff, I don't know if you differ from that. I hate it. I I really do hate it. Yeah. But I do I do think that eventually we will go back to starting pitchers actually being starting pitchers for the one simple reason of money. Relievers don't get paid as much money. What has everything in baseball for the past I don't know ten years been about money? We want to get paid more money. We need more money. They're not going to get as much money if they're only throwing three, four, five innings a start, you know, right? Every five days, it's just not going to happen. But they're still going to want more money. So sure. you know, it push is going to come to shove. You know, are they going to take the pay cut for an easier job, or are they going to go back to pitching how starting pitcher should be? Yeah, I think that's a good point, Jeff. Um, Anthony, did you have anything to add to that? No, nah, it's just it's just something I noticed, and you know I, I agree with Jeff. And I think when push comes to shove, I mean you're gonna look. I think you know front office guys are gonna look at people, a guy's stat lines when they do hit the mark, and be like, "You pitch, you're a starting pitcher, but you pitched 80 innings. Like what is that? Like you just that's just not it's not normal, right? We've seen guys, we've seen 200, sure. 220." You've seen like two thirty a couple years ago, or like ten years ago. Like we don't like we don't even see that anymore. Like it's so rare. Like two hundred is like oh my god. Now it's like, like what? So it was just something I just yeah. wanted to bring up because it's just it's just I've seen it with New York, and I'm pretty sure it's happening around the league as well. Not a lot of pitchers are doing it. Oh and, yeah, and, and it concerns me. It's just like all right. Like I like the starting pitcher because I'm just like then everyone's bullpen is gonna get gassed and I think you're doing more harm than good um, by doing this. So I think starting pitchers need to have build more endurance and they gotta figure out you're a starter for a reason. You gotta figure out a way to to last that long. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. The the basis of a good outing for a pitcher is called a quality start. For those of you who don't know what a quality start is, a quality start is a start where a pitcher throws a minimum of six innings and has two or fewer earned runs put through. So a 3.0 GPA, or not GPA, ERA on the day with at least six innings pitched. That is the basis of what's considered a good start. And I won't be surprised if that number's gone down, not because more runs are being scored, although it's possible, but because pitches just aren't pitching as long anymore. Right. Yeah, I, I I, guess, you know, the more I think about it, the more I can see more of a kind of a resurgence in this. Uh, maybe it's possible because you know, bullpens can't last uh, that long. So I, that's the only reason I could really see it coming back because it just takes, you know, it just takes such a toll on the bullpen. It's not a split in half. It's, it's a lot of work on those guys, especially your, 
top guys, especially like the Yankees, where you're relying on what six, seven guys in and out, day in, day out, really consistently to come through. And you got more than those guys in the bullpen, but those are the guys you really rely on. And and you know they're going to need every arm, especially Chapman's, Greens, Loisikas, uh, Litkies. I can go on and on, but those arms are going to be needed. And if you're going to be pitching, you know, five innings a night or four and a half, whatever it is, if you're at home and you're winning, um, you know, it's, it, it could be really, that can be really costly halfway through the season um, uh, with that. So yeah, I could, I, I could definitely see what you guys are talking about with a potential resurgence. Um, anything you guys want to add before we move on? I'm good. No. All right, cool. All right. With that, we are going to move on. This is the first time we are doing this. Ever since last regular season, Dom had so much fun doing with me last year. So we're going to do it with Anthony and Jeff. First one of the regular season, guys. Bring it on for the bro of the week. Second Let's get one. it going. That our bro of the week, if, for those who don't remember, the bro of the week is the player who you loved most in the week that was in baseball. So with that in mind, Anthony, Jeff. Who are your uh, bros of the week? Any of you can go first. I got mine. If you want me to go first, Anthony. You go first, Jeff. Buck Show Walter. <laughs> Buck okay. Show Walter. All right. Why do you say that? I, I respect Buck that. Show Walter. I respect because, that. Because Fra- Francisco Lindor got plunked in the face. Well, in the, in the helmet guard. And... Who was the first guy storming out that dugout, cursing up a storm, and on a one-way ticket to get ejected? It was Buck Showalter, and that whole team came storming right behind him as well. That's that's a leader in my eyes, and it it's an intensity and a give a damn attitude that the Mets have needed for so long now, and they finally found it from what it seems in Buck Showalter. So major props to Buck Showalter for standing up for his man and showing his team that I'm going to fight for you every day. Okay. Um, Anthony, bro of the week, you got one? I do. I'm going to skip the obvious one, as we probably all know who our all collectively bro of the week would be. Um, I'm going to go with Bobby Wood Jr. for mine individually, just for the fact that he gets his first big league hit it's a, it's a big uh, go-ahead double to win the game. His parents are there. It's great. And then also he makes this ridiculous web gem of a play to, gun a, to get a run around at home. I mean, it was beautiful. So, you know, that's my bro of the week. I have another one as well, but I'm guessing you guys can figure out who the other one is. Well, Derek Jeter. <laughs> no. For the documentary no. coming out. No, not, no, no. He will be um, my bro of the okay, week. Okay, how about that? It, he will be that week. All right. Well, how about how about how about Anthony Rizzo? No. Yep. No. No. Mm-hmm. I would say I thought it would. Well, be mine's not a Yankee. Right. So if you mine's not a Yankee. So if you would like it's to stay yours, go right ahead. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's sure Stan, yeah. the guy. Yeah, the guy at this point, like too. you can't. He homered in five straight games against the Red Sox. Again, six. what? Six. Yeah, six, six, five. Yeah, five regular season. Saturday. Six if you include the yeah, six if you include the wild card game. Um, but I think you know, I think people yep. are just. I'm seeing all over Twitter land. You know, he is everyone's favorite Yankee as of right now. And you know, when he's hot, when he when he's hot, he's hot. I know Sunday didn't. You know, he did play well. He, he played well. His last at bat, I knew he was striking out. I could just see it in a swing because you can tell when John Carl's about to strike out. Like when his like when his hips are flying out or he's just kind of stiff and he's just like swinging like this, you know he's yeah. gonna strike out. And I knew that when 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 Deakman came in the game. So, but regardless, he he did put on a show. So he is also my bro of the week, the more obvious one uh, from the Yankee. But he will be my bro of the week um, in yeah. July, just as a teaser for everyone listening. Yeah. All right, mine, my bro of the week. Um, I can't wait for mine. Mine is less serious. It's the same exact series. Jeff. All right. So Jeff, so, so Jeff already knows who my bro of the week is. 
I don't know if Anthony does. I'm assuming he does. Um, but my bro of the week is in the same exact series as Jeff. Same exact uh, game that Jeff's referring to. Without further ado, it is going to be Steve Ciszak of the Washington Nationals. Why? And why is that? Why? <laughs> Jeff holds thumbs up uh, or thumbs down. Purely huh? because he hates Francisco Lindor with as almost as much as oh. I hate Trey. Bam. Why do, nearly, why do you hate him? Nearly, why, and for those. Why do you hate him so much? Huh? I didn't know you hated him. Why Lindor? do you hate Lindor so much? Yeah, why do you hate him so much? What has he done to do you? Not forget, do you not forget what happened to the. Do you, do you forget what happened with the thing with Stanton last year? You don't remember what happened with Stan last year in the in the Subway Series at City Field? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They were chirp. Oh yeah, he was chirping at him. Yeah, he was chirping, and then and on top of that, he's like the most overrated player in baseball, and I can't stand seeing teams pay so much money for for someone like him. Like he's got the the worst average for the contract. Right, um, I forgot. I, 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 I forgot. can't. I can't. Yeah, I forgot about that whole that 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 Ben just playing against it. I forgot about that. that so was Steve Ciszak is my bro of the week. That's right. Yeah, I remember. I forgot about that. Steve Ciszak. I don't. I don't often do bros of the week like that. Often, where it's more vengeance. But that'll be my first one. And I figured, why not? Um. So that is my bro of the week, Steve Ciszak. Update um, on the Yankees. The Yankees are now up four nothing, and is correct. the run was not a home run. So now it's seventeen total runs, four earned off of just base hits. Sack fly for Stanton. Nice. And by the way, Rip Sean Sack, because he needed a home run. It was run a laser, him, and he didn't get it first bat. <laughs> Tragic. <laughs> um. So yeah. That's um, that's that's my bro of the week, and it will probably ch- it, I will do something more play oriented next week. Uh, someone more my fantasy team. I wish I could do Shohei Otani, but he's batting only um, what one eighty two in the first week of the season. Bummer. Yeah. For those yeah. who remember, I drafted him first overall, so whatever. Anthony's <laughs> happy about that. Anthony's up nearly, I think, forty points almost now, thirty six, thirty five. Um, yeah, so Anthony's doing well, and. So let's jump right to that, to fantasy, since we're talking about it. Jeff, you are up so much. And for those who follow, by the way, go follow us on Swing the Twig Pod, at Swing the Twig Pod on Instagram, um, if you aren't doing so yet. Uh, we've been posting about fantasy baseball throughout the weekend. Uh, we posted that Dom was up 52 points on Jeff in the first day. 52 points. And, we've, and Jeff made a little meme of uh, saying, I didn't hear no bell when there's two weeks left <laughs> in, the, in the competition and Jeff, you know, flat, uh, you know, fast forward to now, Jeff is up. What's the total score, Jeff? 111, 295 to 184. There you have it. <laughs> 295 to 184. You said 295, 184. Beautiful. I think, I think we're all happy for that so far. Yeah. Let's round of applause, please, for Jeff. Um, and that's and you know what? Good for Jeff because, as we said before, Dom got word of Dom got word on Friday that we all want to we all want to beat him whenever we play him, um, and he was kind of sad by that. But <laughs> <laughs> he's not on tonight for different reasons. So um, you know he he would love to be on tonight to chirp with Jeff, but he'll be here Thursday. Um, but yeah, so. So yeah, Dom, yeah. Dom got word of that he told me on Friday. He calls me. He's like, he's like, hey. So I heard that you guys, you guys, uh, that everyone uh, wants to beat me in fantasy baseball. <laughs> he said I was a little sad when when I heard that. <laughs> yeah. We so, need a villain. So yeah, we're, villain. I don't know why we did that. We exactly, exactly. We we need an antagonist. Um, you know. Oh no! If I if if I if I start blowing all you guys out, I'll be the villain. Say that again. If if all you guys start losing hard to, to me, then I'll be the villain. I think what prompted it was was Dom's such confidence, where he was like, where he was like, what did he say? He's like, you know what? If I lose to Anthony and Tommy, I would just shake their hand and accept it. But if I lost to Jeff. <laughs> I couldn't live with myself. He said something like that on one of these shows. <laughs> he said he couldn't live with himself if he lost to Jeff. And now it looks like Jeff's on the uh, on the pathway to victory. 
um, pretty easily. But to be well, fair, I think – what's yeah. that? Still a lot of time left, though. I will say all, yeah. the, all of our pitchers got to make another round. So that that's what really boosted me up and what killed Dom. So – you know, it's entirely possible that it reverses entirely, but yeah, who knows? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I could totally see that. It's 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 possible, but again, you know, you're up 111, so you're you're sitting on a comfortable cushion right now, um, for this for this period of time. Um, hopefully Jeff hangs on to that lead to beat Dom, and we can have Dom back here Thursday to talk that. Anthony, you are the only one here who has played fantasy. Or sorry, not fantasy. You are the only one here who has played MLB The Show 22. Um, I played. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. You played. Yep, Did you I buy played. It? Did you buy uh, it? my brother? My brother bought it, and we just split cost. Nice. All right. All right. Um, I have yet to play it. Full disclosure. But Anthony and Jeff, you guys are the reviewers. Um, for any listeners, viewers, uh, what are you guys' thoughts on uh the game? Um, I will say. You know, I've been pl- I've been playing this game. I I just got back in. T- I got I remember I pl- I played the game since 2010. So I've been playing this game for a long time. And I took a break when I got my Xbox because at the time it was a PS exclusive game. And then last year was the first time I went to Xbox. And I didn't play last. I didn't play last year because you know it was a new gen. They had to work out some kinks. There was a lot of lag issues with the game last year, both online and offline. So I couldn't play the game. This year, I got back to it, it. So far, so good. The only issue that I'm having with, I don't know, Jeff, if you're having this, if you have the old generation Xbox, is that it skips frames a little bit. Meaning, like, when the pitcher... So, if you're pitching, if you're pitching, you select the pitch, your screen will, like, blink or it'll flash, like, really quick. Like, it'll be, like, a blip, and then it'll go back. Um, so, it's, like, skipping a frame. I think it's because of the frame rate issue from it being a new gen game playing on an old gen console. Um, so I'm probably going to have to get the mm-hmm. Xbox one series X um, sooner rather than later. But other than that, like I'm enjoying it. My team's pretty solid. Um, I'm loving the co-op mode. Me and Sean, a good friend of me, Tommy and Dom, Jeff, you have not to met him. Good guy. However, he is a Red Sox fan. I am actually um, um, roasting him right now as we speak. Um, he uh, He's also... <laughs> He's all, he's very good at the game. We play co-op together. Um, and it's super fun, you know, you know, like, cause I, I hit and then like, he would watch me hit. And then like, if I were to get a hit, he runs the bases and then it flips. And then if like, if you're on defense, someone's pitching the other one's playing defense. So it's really fun. Um, and it's a new mode. So obviously there's some kinks they got to work out, but overall it's, I've enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, yeah. And I'm just ready to school knob whenever he gets the game because I just want to beat his ass. I don't think he's getting the game. He said he wasn't on here, right? He's not going to get the game, but he still talks to me. He's like, oh, how's the game? I'm like, it's good, Dom. You should buy it. But he's not going <laughs> to buy it. Hey, I got an idea. I got an idea. Jeff, if you're down for this, we should have a Twitch stream of a game between Anthony and Dom. Ooh. Ooh. Like the idea? I like but Dom, that. But Dom, but Dom's got to get the game because my, team, my team's already good. I already got, like, most diamonds. I packed Aaron Judge already. He's on the squad. Ooh, yeah. So, so you got a head start. I yeah, I have a head start, and I have a good. I've 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 like half my teams all diamonds. So I'm <sighs> I'm pretty. Yeah, I've been grind. I've been yeah. Me and Sean, we've been grinding. So. Oh my. So well, it, okay. It's, it's good. So, I like it. Yeah, Dom. Dom. Uh, I don't know. Is Dom really that good, Anthony, at the game? He says he is. He is. I'll, I'll give. I'll give him his credit. Dom. Dom is very good at the game. But um, <laughs> if I. If I. If I. If I, if, I, if I, he knows if I get hot, he's not beating me. He knows that for a fact. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Jeff, uh, do you share the same views as Anthony on the game? Yeah. So, um, Anthony, I have PS4. So I. I have old gen PlayStation, but I haven't had that issue that you have. Um, I will say though, an issue that pops up a lot is you, you'll be an online play against someone else and they'll deliver the pitch and the pitch will move kind of mm. like that. Like yeah. Kind of like mm-hmm. stop and go and move very slowly. And it, it just messes so much with you when you do that. And you, 
I mean, at that point, you're better off just not swinging and hoping that's a ball or, you know, curveball or something. Because, you know, everyone wants to throw those in online play. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, I I have not had a chance to check out the mini seasons yet in Diamond Dynasty. And I really want to check that out because it looks really fun. No, those are fun. And the the Longo reward is really good. Like, I don't, Sean has them. It's yeah. a really good reward. Yeah, I, I, I've heard good things about it so far. Nice. But, yeah, I mean, I mean, how, how my brother and I work it is I grind out all the moments and everything, you know, the yucky stuff that no one wants to do. You know, hit two home runs with Mike Trapp, who only has one track power for some reason. Mm. But, yeah. you know, I, I grind all that out, and then he does the online play and everything because he – He's better at the game than I am. I've never been good with joystick console stuff. I've always been PC guy, but I, I play this because I enjoy it. Interesting. Nice. You guys make me want to get the game now, uh, despite your um, your small complaints just, about the game. Just if you, you get should. the game, you just should. like invest in a next gen console because, like, obviously there's issues with Xbox. It being, you know, there's a rate, there's a game rate frame rate issue and. You know, Jeff's having same same issue, but just in a different form because it is on a old gen. I talked to Sean. He also he has the Series X, and I asked him, "Do you have this issue?" And he says, "No." So it's not that it's not that they didn't develop the game badly. It's just that you really shouldn't be playing this on an Xbox One or a PS4. You need to be playing it on a PS5 or a Series X. Well, that. It, it's always been an issue with the PS4 is that, you know, that frame rate and the late and the lag issue. It's always been a problem with the really? game, at least for PS4. Well, let me ask you yeah, this. Are, you playing, um, on a, are think... you playing on a PC monitor or TV? TV. Uh, that could be why, too. Yeah. Because you're playing on a TV, it, your, lat- yeah, it... your, your latency is worse or your, or, your, or your MMS is worse. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah, is, it, 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 it's just always been an issue for us, as long as we've had on PS4. Um, I don't think it's as bad on PS5. Actually, I don't know if it happens at all on PS5, but I, I know for PS4, it's it's been a problem, and it's still a problem, but it it doesn't happen often enough that you go, wow, this is like game-breaking kind of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, I think you that... roll your eyes at it. Yeah, I think that um, for people that do want to, like, invest in the game and get good at it, obviously get the next-gen console on them. If you do have the money to spend for it, I did. I did. I bought it in quarantine. I bought a gaming monitor. It's, like, 150 bucks. Reason being is I did some research online and is that the, the um, like, the lower latency lag you have, the better. So it's, so like, the input like the input lag so that's why like so when you're playing on a tv it's like coming in at four mms which is like pretty high or it's really not that great if you play on a monitor you need to get a monitor that has one mms that's the lowest possible that it can be at so therefore you have quicker response time to the pitches um so therefore you can catch up to them faster so i have that wire connection i just need a new series x and i think i'll be good to go Nice. Very cool. All right. So that, all right. So that sounds fun. Um, you guys are making me consider, it. even though I'm not a big gamer, um, I'll consider it, uh, for sure. So thanks guys. <laughs> I think you guys did a service to people who don't have it yet. Um, certainly myself, but more importantly, uh, Sunday night baseball, the Jeter trailer came out for the documentary. Anthony, I'm going to let you know, uh, say the date. I know the date, but you're going to say the date. When is it coming out? Drum roll, please. Do we get one? Are we getting a drum roll? No drum roll. Are All we? right, not I working. Not. Anthony, I guess when's not. The, just so tell me. it is. Uh, so <laughs> it'll be. It'll be July 18th on ESPN and ESPN Plus. Um, I'm excited. I got goosebumps. Even though it was only 30 seconds, I was watching the game, and I told my friend Racket, I was like, like. Um, I was like, I'm like going to be latest folks through every commercial break. Cause they didn't, the guy, the director didn't say when the thing was coming out or like what break it was happening at. And then nine o'clock rolls around and I just hear the ESPN films like, Oh, Oh my God. Oh, oh my, stop, stop the press. So, um, uh, oh, it God. was, uh, 
I'm I'm excited and to see the list of character the, the not the list of characters the the people that's in it um I think it's great. I think the two people that stood out to me the most because I love the controversy and I want to know the juicy shit. A Rod and Brian Cashman are in this documentary. Yeah. That is big because we know Brian Cashman and Derek Jeter did not have the greatest relationship later on in the career when they were going through his second contract negotiation after the 2009 season. And obviously A-Rod and them, best buddies when they first came into the league. Then 2000, 2001 hits. A-Rod says Jeter shouldn't be getting paid $200 million. And then this whole frenemies thing begins. So we're going to get some answers. I think Jeter's going to be very candid. I think that quote in the in the trailer where he says, I don't have to be your best friend. That was kind of a quote that says, okay, we're about to see a side of Derek Jeter that we haven't seen at all. It's going to be like the Michael Jordan. And the fact that it's really just about Jeter and not about kind of the team itself, I think it's going to be better. Obviously, they're going to talk about the dynasty team and, you know, Tino's in it, Mariano's in it, Bernie's in it, Andy's in it, but... It's focused on Derek himself. I know the last dance was, was about, everyone knew it was more about Michael Jordan, but there was this arc around the Bulls and there was storyline, a big storyline on Scotty Pippen and Steve Kerr and Phil Jackson. There were episodes dedicated to those individuals, but I don't think it's going to be like that with this documentary. I think it's solely going to be on Jeter and every athlete that's in it is going to have a supporting kind of role in this documentary. And I'm just super pumped and, you know, do not call me or text me. During this, if you try to call me, I will not answer. I might shut my phone off when I'm watching this. Like, do Are not we watching bother that? Me. When is hmm? it? July 18th? July 18th. So that's a Monday. So that is the week. So that's so the episode one. I don't know how they're going to air it. Episode one is airing um, the first day of All Star Weekend break, I think. Um, okay. So I don't know how they're going to do it. If it's going to be an every week thing or if they're just going to do it i have no idea i'm guessing it's gonna be every monday or something like that i don't because that's how the jordan one was it was every sunday at nine this one's probably gonna be that too every monday at nine or whatever but i'm i'm hyped i don't know how you guys felt when you guys saw the trailer um but i just geeked out yeah oh for sure i i'm I'm looking forward to it I, i i don't have to say that i think i think it's uh i think it's gonna be great i have no no doubt in my mind jeff same way yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't have to think twice about that. July 18th, mark it down. Um, wherever I'll be working, I'll make time to find it because I know I'll be working by then. Um, so you best we'll be see. making time. Uh, it's at 9 o'clock. It, yeah, I absolutely will. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll find a way um, for sure. So, all right. Do you guys have anything more to say before we go? Anything? Anything we missed, Jeff? Now's time. Speak now or forever. Hold your peace. Ooh, I'm trying to think right now. Um, There's one thing we missed. I think in terms of the big... What That's, we it. Miss? That's it, I think, right? No judge right. extension. Well, we don't have to talk uh, about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll get into yeah. that on Thursday. Sad, yeah. sad. Well, I, I, sad boy hours. I want, I want to hear Don's opinion from a not biased Yankees fan opinion because I... I, I have strong feelings on the whole thing. I know you guys have strong feelings on the whole thing since we're Yankee fans. Yeah. I want to hear what a not Yankee fan has to say about it. Yeah, me too. Um, okay, great. So, all right, we'll do that then for Thursday. We'll get Dom on here to talk about the fantasy matchup with you and and then to talk about that. <laughs> 122 points now. Oh, oh damn! Yep. It's kind of, you're kind of, you're kind of wrapping it up. You might have it by tomorrow. If you go up by one fifty. I think it's over. <laughs> yeah. If, I, if my if my pitchers do great tomorrow, then yeah. Oh, that'd be awesome for for everybody. If Jeff wins, I don't care if I lose to Anthony as long as Jeff beats Dom. That's uh, that's <laughs> matters because I get Dom next. So no, no matter what happens Ooh. between me and Anthony, no matter what happens between me and Anthony, I get Dom next. And that's mm-hmm. all I think I get him next. And that's all I care about. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> so, all right. With that in mind, um, we'll be back here on Thursday. We will see you then. Follow, go email the pod if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. SwingTheTwig at gmail.com. Go follow us on Instagram, swing, or swing the twig pod. 
and Twitter, Swing Twig. We will see you all then from Tommy, Jeff, and Anthony. Have a good week, everybody. Hey, thanks so much for listening to the Swing the Twig podcast. If you really love this show, please give us a five-star review and be sure to subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or concerns, email the podcast at swingthetwig at gmail.com. If you want to follow us on social media, go to our Instagram at swingthetwigpod or you can go on Twitter at swingtwig.